What happens if an NBA player is caught gambling on a game he actually played in? Well, on March 25th, it was flagged that Jonte Porter may have purposely rigged the betting on his own personal player prop bets to ensure that he would hit the under in three separate games this season, as in each of these games, Jonte asked out early due to some injury or another. However, the story here goes much deeper than you might think, as the more you dig into it, the more you find that several games this season, more than just the Grizzlies, Clippers, and Kings, Porter hit the under in his prop bets and seemingly did not try to play basketball at all. The way you are watching him put in effort towards rebounding on screen would get a lot of players cut from the league and posts have sprung up such as Jonte Porter has an X and Discord service where he shares speculative stock tips and likes gambling posts. Ugh. The stakes for this scandal are extremely high, as gambling rings typically do not include just three games, and they also do not typically include just one single player. This has happened in the NBA before. Way back in the 1950s and 60s, Jack Molinas was a rookie all-star, but then was banned from basketball after a college point-shaving scandal that involved 50 players from 27 different teams. Jack Molinas was later killed at the age of 43, with the police not ruling out a mob-related murder. His business partner was also beat to death. So understandably, Adam Silver has made it very clear recently, stating, I have an enormous range of discipline available to me, but it's a cardinal sin what he's, Jonte Porter, accused of in the NBA, and the ultimate extreme option I have is to ban him from the game. The NBA has made it clear. There is no tolerance here. Players such as John Morant had gun charges. They were let back. Miles Bridges assaulted a woman, allowed back. Ron Artest and Steven Jackson attacked fans in the stands. Allowed back. Gambling on games, you are gone. This is needed, especially because the rise in sports gambling has given new avenues for potential rigging of bets, such as the case with Jonte Porter, who has been accused of throwing his prop bets. What's up, Mike here, and the thing is, while three specific games have been flagged by major sports books, digging deeper into this situation shows several more potential games that Porter may have rigged. These games were not flagged by sports betting services because they did not have as much gambling action, but that does not mean that they were still not rigged. The big betting action happened on two separate days. On January 26th, Porter sat out with what he said was an eye injury against the Clippers after playing just a few minutes, causing him to hit the under on all of his prop bets, which the next day, sportsbooks would reveal that the under on Jonte Porter's three-pointers made that night was strangely the biggest money-making bet out of every NBA prop bet available on that day, which was already weird for a little known role player. What gets even stranger is that on March 20th against the Kings, again, Porter played a few minutes, sat with a sickness, and his unders hit again. It was then released that Jonte Porter prop bets were the biggest money maker out of any NBA bet that night. After this Kings game, a source close to the situation would say, people were trying to do whatever they could to bet Jonte Porter props against the Clippers. And then just a few days ago, the same thing. We had a bunch of people trying to bet under for more. We're talking $10,000 bets, $20,000 bets. People were going all in on Jonte Porter, seemingly knowing something. And yes, these are the two games the NBA has specifically flagged as they are the most glaringly obvious. However, if we look at the site bettingpros.com, we find that Porter's prop bet activity this entire season has been highly, highly suspicious. The under for his points scored has hit seven out of nine times. This was before he was forced to sit due to this investigation. When he had hit the under for points scored three Three times in a row, scoring a combined four points in these three games as his lines were 6.5 points against Orlando, 6.5 against Orlando again, and 8.5 against the Kings. Against the Kings, Porter would again sub himself out with another illness, and the evidence keeps piling up here. This season, Porter has also hit the under on six out of his eight games where three-pointers have been in play, again according to bettingpros.com, including the final three games he was given a line. It is Porter's rebounding though that has to be the smoking gun. His rebounding has to be the biggest case used against him because rebounding comes down to pure effort. Diving into the stats again, we find that Porter is an under darling this season as he has hit the under in eight of his nine games he had a rebounding line. And if we dig in to these actual games, you can decide for yourself, is he throwing these stats? Before we continue, I want to say that 72.8% of you that watch this channel are not subscribed. So if you are enjoying this content, it would be awesome if you subscribed and turn on post notifications. That way we can get to 
2 million subs together. As for Porter, the NBA was alerted of suspicious activity for the Los Angeles Clippers game. However, it would make perfect sense that before people bet big on Porter, they would throw out some test cases to see if he was willing to play ball and actually go through with this. So here we are on January 15th against the Boston Celtics. In his last two games, Porter had six and seven rebounds, so his line was set at 5.5. Watch how, as in the first quarter, Porter is extremely active on the offensive end, crashing the boards, and he ends up grabbing three rebounds. But from here, everything would quickly change. Checking into the game in the second quarter with around seven minutes and 30 seconds left. Watch as he stops crashing the glass entirely. He plays a completely different game of basketball. This will be a constant, his complete lack of effort. Notice at 7-10 while boxing out Al Horford, Porter does not turn around towards the basket and lets his teammate do all of the work. Same at 640, no rebound attempt at all. At 555, he actually runs behind Porzingis to force himself into bad rebounding position. And then at 450, yet again, he's not crashing for a board. On the other end, he allows Porzingis to jump right by him instead of snagging an easy rebound. And to finish things off here in this Boston Celtics game alone, Porter allows Peyton Pritchard to box him out with around two minutes and 30 seconds left with again, no real effort at trying to grab the basketball at all. The very next game against the Miami Heat, Porter was added again. Somehow in the first 90 seconds of this game, he would grab three rebounds with his prop bet line set at 5.5, needing only three rebounds to hit the over. From here, the rest of the entire game, Porter would refuse to crash the offensive boards and instead, as a hustling big man, would just stand at the three-point line. In the third quarter, this was very noticeable as with 11 minutes and 20 seconds left, we can see Jonte not trying to grab a rebound. Same with two minutes and 55 seconds left. Same with 14 seconds left. Same with this entire game, really. These are just the most obvious examples. If you go back and watch the actual tape yourself, you will see that the man could not care less about rebounds. After again, not trying at all with 10 minutes and five seconds left, Porter would be subbed out and the prop bet would hit. The under worked again. I'm sure we can all agree that if I am able to show you these kinds of clips from just watching old games this year, the NBA, who is doing a full on investigation into this, will be seeing the same thing and even more. And I have to say, it is great that the NBA is getting ahead of this and it is great that Adam Silver is directly commenting on this. There should be no tolerance here because setting a line in cement is the only thing you can do. If you go out, if you throw games, if you bet on them, you are of course ruining the product of NBA basketball for fans. And by banning a player who is doing it, any other player who has whispered sweet nothings about gambling money in their ear will think more than twice. This is not only important just due to the rise in sports gambling, it is important because of what we have been seeing on the court. Suspicious betting activity has actually been found in the college basketball game this very season as well. This year, Temple had two of their basketball games flagged for highly suspicious gambling activity. Loyola Maryland also had one game flagged as a new survey found that, quote, in a 2023 NCAA survey of athletic departments, third 15% of Division I administrators said they had dealt with a gambling or sports wagering problem within the past year, compared with just 4% in 2019. Did we just hear that correctly? 13% of colleges have dealt with internal sports gambling problems, and we as fans have barely heard anything. If Jonte Porter is found guilty here and does get banned, it is going to send a much needed statement to the rest of the league. There is no place for this in the NBA. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, I think you will like the recent Luca video we did on the disrespect he's been getting, or I think you'll enjoy what really happened to the downfall of Isaiah Thomas's career. Thank you for watching. I hope you subscribe and turn on post notifications. If you're already subscribed, have an awesome day. You're awesome. We all know it. And peace.